Hello everyone, welcome back to another painting lab video. This time, showing my experience about how I improve on color and lighting. I'm Masha, a beginner artist. There was a period of time I refused to color my drawings. Because every time I tried to color, the result was worse than just line art. If you remember the 3 days challenge I did before, it was the first time I tried to color my drawing in years. It gave me a lot of confidence, so I will challenge myself again. Oh and, if you haven't watched that video yet, the link is down in the description box below. Back to today's topic. I watched many tutorial videos, asked other artists, and did a lot of reference analysis, trying to understand the concept and learn what approaches most artists use. I will share my findings in three directions. Contrast, shape of shade, and color choice. There are many different light settings, this time I'm focusing on direct lighting, which means there is a strong and specific light source. Before I start, I just want to do a quick heads up. The answer I got here are based on my reference choice. It is not the absolute answer. Okay, let's start from the first section, contrast in brightness. What is this contrast exactly? After many research, I concluded this way. It is the way we explain how light affects the object, and it's the reason we can feel light in an illustration. When a picture looks not that attractive or just simply doesn't look good, one reason could be that the black and white contrast or brightness contrast is incorrect or inconsistent. So what is a good contrast? Is there a rule of thumb that I can follow? The answer is yes. Let me show you what I found and how I found it. When learning contrast, one way is to turn the picture into black and white using a all black hue layer. This way I can focus on its contrast information. Here I'm setting the hue layer and you can see the reference will turn black and white only. Now I can check the brightness value of different parts. Use the eyedrop tool and pay close attention to the brightness bar on top left. For example, let's look at the characters here. The area got hit by the light brightness is 70, and the area in the shadow, the brightness is 33, the difference is 37. Interestingly, even within the part that is completely brightened or shaded, the value is not consistent. Take a closer look here. I see there is a slight color change. This also caused the brightness to fluctuate a little, but the difference is much smaller. Then I checked many other references. I noticed that depending on the strength of the light, the brightness difference between lighted and shaded parts is around 30 to 50. The key here is to always keep the contrast within the range even after adding the colors. I learned this lesson when I move on to the other concepts later on. If you like our content so far, please press the like button and subscribe the channel so you don't miss the next video. Next, the shape of shade. Because of the contrast, the shade is usually recognized as a complete shape by itself. I think a good shading can greatly affect how a drawing looks. After many tryouts, I found a great way of drawing the shade. That is, start from painting out the overall shadows according to the light source, then move on to smaller details. Now I just imagine I'm painting a bunch of cubes, cylinders, spheres, and cones. Now I have an object with a shade that can generally tell me where the light is coming from, but it still looks kind of simple comparing with the reference. So, I want to refine the shape a bit. Before starting, let's first analyze one of the references. In this reference, I see a lot of triangles, quadrilaterals, and water drop shapes. On top of that, I notice a pattern. This is known as the big middle small rule. That is a way of arranging different shapes in different sizes to enrich the picture's composition. Let's try it out. This looks better, just not colored yet. Now it's time to move on to the third part, color choice. We know that color has a strong effect on the mood of the picture. Cold color illustrations can be related to rain, ice, water, loneliness, gloom, abandoned buildings, lavatories, and warmer color illustrations, mostly hinting light, warmness, holiness, clean, pure, soft, and dreamy feelings. So I start to think about what kind of mood I want my painting to have before choosing color. I really like this painting by Rolua. 
Look at this lighting. It looks like the character is under a bluish white lighting. It gives a cold and outdoor feel. I also want my drawing to have this kind of vibe, but after a few attempts, I couldn't get the feeling I want. Masking my picture with a black hue layer, I saw my contrast is not like the reference. I realized that color also affects black and white contrast, and the color choice can be improved. There must be a way to choose the color I need while still keeping the contrast under control. So I tried to find out what light and shadow color Rola may have used. Because this illustration seems to have a cold bluish light, if I ignore this light, the object's base color are probably these. On top of that, I put a multiply and an overlay layer. Now I try to recreate the lighting using these three layers. First, I paint the shadow on multiply layer. It's off at first, but after multiple trials and errors, I got a color that is close enough. The color on the multiply layer doesn't have to be the same all the way. I did the same experiment on overlay layer for lighting color. Soft light layer should work too. And the answer I found is to use less saturated color, mostly under 50, inside this box. This applies to the normal layer, multiply layer, and overlay layer. If I try to use too much color out of this box, my picture gets like this. But if I apply the color choice box I got from the analysis, this is what I got. Here's my color choosing strategy, which is a result based on my reference choice and personal preference. It's more complicated, so if you're interested, pause if you need to. I see many artists like to do a little color change to make the illustration look more vibrant, so I tried to do that too using gradient tool and airbrushes. Oh, and I also created a lighting checklist. I'll put a link for you to download it if you want to use this when you're drawing. And that's it for today. If you enjoyed our video, make sure to like and subscribe so you won't miss anything. And if you are interested in any other topics, leave us a comment below. Ever wondered how a drawing is made from scratch? Be sure to check out this video where we interview this artist. See you next time!